atomic math, what you will be doing is learning how to solve to find how many subatomic particles, and those are protons, neutrons, and electrons, an atom contains based on the information in the periodic table. Here is an example of a periodic table of elements. We are going to zoom in on the element oxygen to identify the subatomic particles that are within its atom. Now that we've zoomed in on the element oxygen, we're going to identify the information provided in the periodic table. So at the top is always listed in the center and sometimes in the corner, doesn't matter, but it's always at the top, is the atomic number. The atomic number is really important because it actually represents how many protons or electrons are in the atom for oxygen. Please, in your notes, write atomic number on the line that's pointing at the 8. Now, each element within the periodic table has its own symbol. They always start with a capital letter, very, very, very important. And sometimes they have a capital and a second letter. And we've gotten so many elements now that sometimes they even have three letters and only the first is capitalized. So on the line that's pointing at the letter O, you need to write symbol. You will actually be using the symbol a lot in life because we use them for compounds. We use them when we're identifying molecules. So they're very important to be able to identify the symbol for all the different elements. Now underneath the element symbol is the element's name. And it always begins with a capital letter and everything else is lowercase. So on your note page, on the third line on the arrow that's pointing to the word oxygen, write element's name. Last but not least, within the information provided in the periodic table is the atomic mass of each element. The atomic mass is really important because it actually represents how many protons and neutrons make up the atom for oxygen. And remember, protons and neutrons are only found in the nucleus. So please write atomic mass on the fourth line. So let's review. The atomic number equals the number of blank or blank. So what has to be balanced in order for Matterville to be stable? Well, of course it's... Protons or electrons. Remember, protons and the electrons need to be equal in order for Matterville to be balanced. Now the atomic mass equals the number of blank plus blank. So here's my hint. What lives in the nucleus? Well, we all remember that protons and neutrons live in the nucleus, so when I add protons plus neutrons, that will equal my atomic mass. So now we're ready to do some atomic math. So we have the atomic number, we have the symbol, I have the atomic mass, so we're missing the name of the element. So let's write the name on the line. Remember, it needs to start with a capital O, and spelling does count. So now let's start filling in this bottom five blanks. So atomic number we know, so fill in the blank please. Remember the atomic number is the top number at the, in each element square. 
So now we need to fill out the atomic mass. Well, I know the atomic mass is the bottom number in each uh, element's box on the periodic table. However, when we write the atomic mass on the line, we round to the nearest ones place. So we got to be able to round. So 15 and 999 thousandths rounds to 16. So let's fill that in, please. So now I've got to figure out the number of protons. Hmm, I just took notes on that. So what represents the number of protons? Oh, that's right. It's my atomic number. But you know what? My atomic number doesn't just mean my number of protons. It also represents the number of electrons. So we're going to cheat and we're going to fill in both blanks for protons and electrons. Because remember, Matterville needs to be stable, so my number of protons and electrons have to match. So last but not least, I've got to figure out my number of neutrons. Well, I know how many protons I have, and I know protons and neutrons live in the nucleus together. And I remember taking notes that said my atomic mass was the number of protons plus neutrons. So let's take my num my atomic mass and I'm going to subtract what I know which is my number of protons in my nucleus well 16 minus 8 is huh fancy day in that so my number of neutrons must be 8 so does that mean protons neutrons and electrons always match absolutely not so be careful don't automatically fill in protons neutrons and electrons as the same number so your homework is to complete the rest of the first page of the atomic mass, identifying the atomic number, atomic mass, number of protons, neutrons, and electrons, but also filling in what is not known for each of the elements. So you've got this page, but you also have the second page that has nine more, and you're going to do the exact same thing. Take your time. Use your notes that you took. Also, use your periodic table of elements. If you need to, show the math on the side, just like Mrs. Koval did, okay? You're going to prove to me how well you learned this by doing a bell ringer at the beginning of class tomorrow. So take your time, and I know you are going to have a lot of success with this atomic math challenge.